Hey everybody, today I'm showing you another cool networking tool. Now I've been meaning to actually do some live streams from my backyard, but even though I have a Verizon Fios router and it's supposed to be very fast and I extended range and everything, I still do not get a good connection in my backyard. It's just too many walls and the setup needs an access point. And I did my research. I looked at a lot of different brands and I finally sell on this. It's not the most expensive one. It's not a Wi-Fi 7 access point router or anything like that, but it seems to have a good reputation. It's a Wi-Fi 6 access point. They explain the speeds here up to 1.8 gigabytes per second. I plan to use this in the wired mode, but you can also use it as a repeater if you want. It degrades the performance of the network. So that's not what I actually recommend. I already have a wireless repeater. And even though it's convenient, very fast to set up, the problem is you're not gonna get the speed that you need. Then you have the client mode for your game consoles and you can also have four different SSIDs. WPA3 security is just a standard. What I like about this is that you can actually power this with an ethernet cable. So if you have the right one, you gotta make sure you have the right one to power it over ethernet. Let's see what's inside. I've not opened this before, this is the first time. It should be a straightforward, really. This is everything that's included. So you have this, which is your ethernet module. You have this, which is your device with four external antennas. This is the back. I'm just covering the information there. Sometimes there are some serial numbers and things like that. So that's your ethernet. You have your WPS. If you have a compatible device, you have your power, you have your ethernet. So these are your antennas, like that. It's actually pretty thin. You also get this cable. It is pretty short, so I probably have to get something that's longer. If you have ever used access points in the past, it's pretty simple, you just have to connect it to one of the ports from the back of your router and then you connect it to a power source. The range extender is a repeater so it happens wirelessly and again you do have to make some configurations to make sure the devices talk to each other but in this case you just connect this to a power source connect to it wirelessly you will get a better range but performance is not going to be as great then you have the client mode which is where you actually connect this to your device and use it as a wireless adapter of sorts. As far as the antennas, you just, there we go. So now I'm ready to go. So I have my four antennas and this is the back. As far as the size, it's very thin. This is the size of the antenna. I'm gonna connect this to my router I'm going to then try to see how well it performs as far as the speed test. For the wireless mode, you have to first connect this to a power source and then you have to actually access the site here and then set it up. So we'll do that right now. You have to connect it to your computer with the ethernet cable. The ethernet cable that came with this is not that long, but it's more than enough for quick setup. You connect it there, just turn it on. See the lights actually come on. So you have to go to tplinkapp.net and this is going to give you access to the page. You have to create a password. I'm just going to create it and that write it here. Once you create the password, you're going to be asked to set your time zone. You can enable smart connect. What is a smart connect? A smart connect allows each of the access points wireless bands to use the same wireless settings. Five gigahertz is already on. You can enable and disable that network SSID. You can also change the password. You can turn on auto update here. It's going to do a connection test. I've used the name of my site for the network. I cannot connect to it. So I have my settings for two and 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. I can hide the SSID if I want. Security can be changed for these. You can also change the mode. I usually go with the default one. So in this case, because I'm going to be wireless, I'm going to have to go here. And then you have your client mode, which is to use as a wireless adapter for your devices, for your TV. So you can think of this as a wireless adapter, just a little bit bigger. Change 
the light status, you have the night mode, it turns off, you have all these settings that are standard for your router. And if you're new to this, you probably shouldn't touch it. But if you know you're networking, or if you want to reboot, for example, that option is available. When you are in your wireless extender mode, it's going to ask you which networks you're going to actually want to extend. Once you have it, you just enter your username and password. So in this mode, the username and password will remain the same. It's just the network name is a little bit different. So you know that you're connecting to the Regi extender. Now I'm connected. Let's see, I'm going to disconnect this from this laptop. Let's see now if it works. Now I've removed it from that ethernet connection. So let's see if it actually works. And now if I can connect to it, I see how the speed is going to be. My network now has that 5G EXT next to it. Now this is the speed that I get in this mode. It is a range extender, so it's not going to be as fast as you expect. This is the 2.4 gigahertz. Now this is my main network. And you can see the difference is just huge between the range extender when you are in the wireless mode. And this is something that is the problem with range extenders is you actually experience significant drop in your speed because of the way it works. Now this is in my garage and I'm sitting a little bit outside. So this is going to be what you get, it seems, from the range extender mode. This is my standard network. Without a range extender, I get pretty much nothing in my backyard. This is now with the range extender in my backyard. So even though it's not that great, it's not 500 or one gigabits per second, things like that, it's still fast enough for me to actually browse the internet. This is one of the videos on my sister channel. I can watch it no problem with the standard Wi-Fi that I have. It doesn't actually have that much of a reach, so I cannot actually watch this. I'm now far away from that, so still, it's pretty much covering all my backyard now. So I put it in my garage, just outside of it. And even here, I'm getting, let's see if I can get good connection here, right next to my shed. This is much lower than my range extender. So the range extender actually does a good job covering most of this area. It's not the fastest, but it's 10 times faster than this based on the results that we just saw. With this, you're gonna actually struggle to load these pages. I mean, it will load, but it's just not gonna be as fast. See, it takes a little bit of time to actually load even the thumbnail. Now this is the 2.4 gigahertz band. Let's see how well this does. This is just slower as expected. It does have more range, but just not as great when handling connections. If you have a backyard like this, I prefer to get the 50, 60 at least. This side of my house, I'm again getting about 61, 62. This is the wireless mode. Now if I go wired, it's going to be much faster. I'm going to show you next. I had this running for a few hours. It does get a little bit warm, but I wouldn't say it's anything alarming. Once you connect this, you just have to wait for these lights to turn on. They, the first couple of minutes, they're going to flash, but once they're on, you can actually access this and you won't get this message anymore. Here, I need to go from the range extender mode to access point mode, or I can just go and select a whole new network and go with this. For this to take effect, you're going to have to reboot it gives me a QR code to actually scan and access the network. I can also just enter the username and password. There you go. My networks are now connected. Now let's test the speed. This is what I'm getting with the wired version. Now, maybe because I have two networks, it's separating them. I have to see, I have to check. Maybe having multiple networks wasn't the greatest idea. This is still about twice as fast as what I was getting before. This is my standard network. I'm wireless, I'm not connected to anything. Now I've set this up as access point. No additional network or anything else. Now I'm connected to the 5G access point mode. There you go. So this is just what I needed. So the, for the max speed, you gotta go with the access point mode. I tried the other one, which has multiple networks, but I think I had three networks set up. So just the connection was around 120, 130 max that I got. This is the power over internet injector. So I'm just testing it, see? I connected this instead of to the router, I connected it to this. 
the adapter and then I connect the ethernet cable to the router. So this way you can actually power this through the internet cable. It gives you more flexibility for installation. The other port is what you are going to need to actually have your wired connection. So that's the LAN port and they actually mark it. Now I'm using that CAT8 cable and I'm getting this connection. So this is pretty good, I would say. This is the CAT8 cable. I've connected it to my Verizon Fios modem. And then I'm connecting the other side here using this cable. If I do a test, there we go. This is pretty much the max I can expect to get from this connection. Now I'm connected to my access point and this is my 5G connection. Should be faster than the other one. Let's see. If I go here, see this is now actually has an open connection. So I get a much better speed here. So this is what I get now. I can actually get that outside. This is the range I'm getting and this is the speed. Now with the regular wireless one, I was getting about 70, whereas this is 240. I don't think I'll be able to get 600 that I was getting inside indoors. That's I think unreasonable. I don't think streaming is going to be an issue the kind of speed that I'm getting pretty much this is all the way back next to my shed this is the 5g connection now the range of the 5g is going to be actually a little bit less than 2.4 gigahertz but you get my faster speed this is the standard 2.4 this is the 2.4 G outside with the access point mode this is the 2.4G performance next to the access point. This is the 5G close to it. So if I close to it all the way, you're going to get something close to 600, which is what I expect, the max I can get. This is designed for outdoors. And for the most part, it should be able to get the job done. Even though I've been testing it all day with different configurations, it's not hot at all. This was the TLWA1801 access point, delivers fast Wi-Fi connection and I use this CAT8 cable to actually pull off the connection. It does a decent job. I was not that impressed with the 2.4 connection, but the 5G connection is fast enough, the wired version. Range extend in range extender mode, it actually did a decent job even though I put it in my garage. It covered pretty much the whole backyard, even though the speed was around 70 megabits per second. Without it, I don't get a whole lot of signal in my backyard and I can barely even open. For more information, please go to Gadgetify.com, also YouTube.com at Gadgetify. I am going to do more tests in the future and maybe try different models to see how they perform. Thanks for watching.